All right, let's get going. 10 minute brown sound. I've got a generic patch loaded up here in Axe Edit. Uh, these are two stock amp and cab blocks. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the changes needed to make this work for a, a brown sound. Uh, you'll notice that I'm dialing up a, a plexi, but I'm using the 50 watt high version. Throughout the course of this video, I'm going to do things that are not standard or not part of the uh, lore of how Eddie got his sound. If you want to use the 100 watt, go ahead. If you want to tweak things for your ears and your gear, uh, I say go ahead and do exactly that. I'm going to get a uh, patch that gets me 90% of the way to the stock or the standard Van Halen uh, brown sound. Uh, and I'm going to use a little bit different tools to get me there. Notice I've set up a stereo ultra res cab here. I'm using default cabs. Uh, you can go out and buy thousands upon thousands of different impulse responses from various third party makers. But I wanted to use cabs that came with the standard firmware for the Axe effects. Note that I am using Quantum version 1 or firmware 21. Um, I've chosen this recto cab, which is not normally associated with Van Halen, but uh, I like the brightness of the baked-in Shure SM57 microphone that goes along with this cab. And I really like this uh, TV mix from ML Sound Studios. Uh, this is a really great produced IR. It has a nice balance and clarity to it. The only things I'm really tweaking here are I'm cutting the low end down a little bit to around 80 hertz and cutting the high end down to uh, around 7,000 hertz to, similar, uh, to simulate what would have happened in the studio to, to get those, um, uh, to get the mix, the guitar to sit right in the mix. Uh, and I'm also going to turn up the, uh, the delay on one of these just a touch. It, it, it gives it a nice sound. Um, so this is the cab settings. I'm not doing anything with the room tab. I'm not doing anything with the preamp tab, though. I've heard people get good um, sounds using the various preamps built in. I'm not doing that for this patch. I've used it for other things with good results, but I don't feel like I need it here. All right, let's take a look at the cab. I'm sorry, the amp settings. Uh, I'm putting input drive up just a touch, around five and a half. I'm turning the bass up to around eight and a half, somewhere in that area. The mids I have cranked up to 10. And the treble I'm putting up around 7.7. .7. You will have people tell you that uh, the best way to, to get a Van Halen sound is to dial up everything on 10. And if that works for you, then fine, that works for you. I don't find that it works well with this particular guitar. Um, as you can see, I'm using a Les Paul. These two pickups are um, Dirty Fingers, Gibson pickups from the early 80s, and they have a distinct tonality that I think uh, causes me to set those, um, the, the treble and the presence down a touch. And uh, it's a very chunky sounding guitar, so I'm, I'm pulling a little bit of the bass out here in the preamp section. To make up for that, I'm um, turning up the depth just a little bit, uh, around 3.7, 3 somewhere in that area. And then putting the dynamic depth up a little bit. This is a nice touch in the Axe Effects that doesn't exist out in the real world, where uh, the harder I pick, the more um, depth I will get out of this particular um, setup. I've got the dynamic presence dialed down to zero so that that's not affecting anything. I'm going to crank up my... Uh, my output a little touch. Master volume is at 10. So here's a stock. Uh, here's what it sounds like right now. So it's um, distinctly marshally, but it's not quite where we want it to be. It doesn't have the brightness. It has a little bit too much low end. So I'm going to take care of that using the EQ tab. I happen to really like this... Uh, Five band passive EQ that came along, I don't know, four or five different firmware revs ago. Um, and what I do is instead of boosting anything, I cut everything. Um, so I want the relative EQ between each 
band to be uh, what determines what it sounds like when it hits the uh, the power amp. Uh, let's see here. Low mid uh, got around minus 8.2. Let me dial this up exactly. I'm reading off my notes here because I wanted to duplicate uh, exactly what I had set up from a previous patch. Minus 8.22. Uh, the mids I have around uh, minus 4.6. I have the high mids at uh, minus 3.69. And then I have the highs at around minus 5 to soften them a touch. Um, so take a look at this EQ. Don't pay attention to these numbers so much, but look at the relative EQ here. Um, I prefer to cut rather than boost EQ. So in order to get this just right, I, I cut it to make this shape look like this. I'm, um, the highs are um, uh, a little higher than the lows. I'm scooping out some of the mud range here with the low mids. Um, boosting, not really boosting, just not cutting as much from the highs, the high mids, and the, and the mids themselves. Uh, I like this little boost here. It tends to give it a Van Halen-esque sound. Let's see what we have now. So we're getting there. This is clearly um, in the area of a, a Van Halen-esque tone. On the speaker page, I'm actually softening the high resonance just a touch. Um, the early Van Halen sound has a, a bright quality and a warm quality all at once. I, I find that by taking that high resonance down just a little bit, it gets me in that ballpark. Um, on the dynamics page, I'm taking the cathode follower compression down because I find that this setting, this patch, gets to be a little squishy. And this helps to mitigate a little bit of that. Uh, I'm leaving crunch at 5. I'm not messing around with the output compressor, again, for the same reason that this patch tends to get a little mushy. Um, I'm not really messing with anything else here on the dynamics page. Um, on the power, I'm taking the power amp hardness and putting it 5 to, to get back a little bit of that uh, low end, um, letting the strings on the low end resonate a little more without being so mushy and putting the power inverter post. Where does that get us? So that's the power section. Uh, on the tone side, I'm really cutting the low frequency quite a bit. Now, people get afraid to turn knobs inside of the, the axe effects. Don't be afraid. Um, see what happens when you do this. Now, I've put a significant cut in there, but listen to my low end. I'm not lacking in low end. It's not a modern, scooped, very heavy tone, but I'm not lacking in, in warmth or definition at the bottom by doing that. But I did clear it up a little bit. Um, our next settings here... The character. Uh, the character type, I'm choosing dynamic. I'm putting the frequency, uh, actually just dial it in right here by hand, at 400 hertz. I'm taking the Q way down and putting the character amount up to around 4.6 or 4.8, 4.9, somewhere in that area. And this adds the ability to, when I'm really digging in, <laughs> So it's, it's adding a little bit um, in that frequency range of the B string in, uh, in this neighborhood. The harder I hit in those uh, frequency ranges, the more those notes pop out. Uh, it really helps when you listen to early Van Halen when he really has that B string ringing out, that third uh, on, the, on his bar chords. really rings out and is very prominent in this setting here. Helps with that. Helps replicate that type of sound. Now, let me go back over here to the cab. Um, I'm taking the pan settings and just turning them to zero. I want the cab to be fairly straight up because we're going to now shift it 
um, once I add the reverb. So you'll notice I'm adding reverb here in, um, in parallel. So I've got a dry signal will go out to output two and the reverb, the wet signal will go to output one. Because I'm doing that, I've got the mix cranked up to 100 and 100. Um, if I take a large plate, put it in place, uh, put your mix up to 100 for both the, uh, the mix, I'm sorry, and the input gain. And then what I've done is I'm taking the, the high cut in the EQ section and really cranking it all the way up. And you'll see that my, my reverb is going to get brighter. It was down in this neighborhood originally. And I'm going to turn it up. And it's a slight difference, but the reverb on the uh, first couple of Van Halen records is significantly um, uh, brighter than you think it is. Uh, when you dial up the plate reverb, the attenuator is going to be low. And, and I like the attenuation to be up a little bit so that, uh, and this is under the ducker tab, right? The reverb will duck just a touch uh, as I'm playing. Uh, here's where we are now. A lot of reverb there. Um, the amount of reverb that's on those that first record especially is quite significant. So I take it down a little bit. I've got the time set to two seconds. And here's what we get. So let's take this sound and actually adjust the balance for um, output uh, number one and output two. I'm going to put the dry guitar sound a little bit over and put the uh, reverb a little bit over to replicate what you hear on the first record. And uh, this is what we get. <laughs> So we're pretty close here. This is a, a good baseline Van Halen sound. You can start uh, messing around with the various Van Halen songs and uh, you'll, you can tweak up and down and you'll notice that this is probably, while it sounds a little bright, a little high endy, um, you'll notice when you compare it to uh, the ISO tracks that it's actually a little darker uh, and you can tweak your own settings as you like to uh, to eliminate that darkness or to boost the brightness. My suggestions to you, you can use the preamp. Um, I happen to like this 50, uh, this tape 50 here, and you can add a little high end to it. Here's with it off, so you can compare. It's not a huge difference, but it's a nice, a nice addition. Uh, like I said, I, I find that I can get a pretty good Van Halen-esque sound without that. So that's the bass um, Van Halen tone. Uh, tune back into the second part of this video, and we'll set up some effects around this. Thanks. Bye-bye.